Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about this beautiful spot on Neptune. This is actually called Great Dark Spot and it's been observed many many times but it does have a tendency to disappear and to change shapes and sizes. In this video we're going to learn a little bit more about gas giants and their spots and we're going to explore this in Universe Sandbox as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. Now let's take a look at this spot in more detail first before we actually go into Universe Sandbox. So what exactly is going on here and what exactly is this? Well, similarly to uh, the great red spot on Jupiter that I've talked about um, previously, this is essentially an Earth-sized uh, storm, it's a cyclone, or specifically it's actually an anti-cyclone, meaning that it's a storm that spins in the opposite direction of where it should be spinning. And this large anticyclone um, is darker on Neptune um, because of essentially really, really high pressure on the inside. And then um, on the outskirts right here, you see very, very bright clouds. And these are actually formed by frozen methane that is uh, thrown up into the skies by uh, this really, really high pressure here. Now, the interesting thing about this spot compared to the one on Jupiter is that this actually doesn't last very long. So um, in, in this game, of course, it will be here for a very long time. Uh, but in real life, we uh, for the first time, we've seen this with Voyager 2 probe back in 1989. So this technically has a name of uh, GDS 89. Uh, GDS stands for Great Dark Spot. But the thing is, uh, then we tried to find it again and it wasn't there anymore. Second time, we saw this spot somewhere else, different size, different shape in uh, 1994. And this was with Hubble telescope. And as we wanted to take more pictures, when we looked at it again, 95, it was gone again. So what we've discovered is that these spots don't last very long. On Jupiter, they last for maybe a few hundred years, but on Neptune, they seem to last anywhere between a few months to possibly a few years maximum. But unfortunately, even today, we don't really know much about them, we don't really know how they form, and neither do we know why they disappear, why they change, and why they're so different here compared, uh, compared to Jupiter. Now, the thing is, this is not the only gas giant that we've detected these on. We've also seen them on Saturn. Now, I don't really know if, uh, if I'm going to be able to find this in, um, in this game, but there is another storm that is a lot smaller, and but also quite well known, known as the Dragon Storm. Um, I'm going to, tr to try to look around for it. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. And this is actually a very beautiful shadow on Saturn right now. Something I didn't expect to see. Uh, but it's somewhere closer to the polar region of Saturn. And this actually might be, there's a little spot right there, but I don't really know. It might be hiding somewhere in these shadows. Dragon Storm is also an anti-cyclonic storm. Basically, it's a storm that spins in the opposite direction. And it's also relatively large, but a lot smaller than either Great Dark um, Spot on Neptune or the Red Spot on Jupiter. So it seems that many of these gas giants have these storms. It seems that it's a very common occurrence on them. So there must be something going on in there, and it must have something to do with the elements or the types of elements that interact with each other, because Neptune has different elements from Jupiter. Jupiter is mostly hydrogen and helium, whereas... Um, Neptune has a lot of various ices, including things like methane and water. Uh, so maybe this is why the, uh, they are slightly different. They're different color, they're different um, shape, size, and also they last slightly different. But we don't really know yet. And as a matter of fact, um, we've only started studying them very recently. So what I actually wanted to do, I wanted to go into Universe Sandbox and see if I can maybe create some random gas giants and possibly create at least one storm on it. Let's see if it is actually possible, if we can actually make it happen, because Jupiter in Universe Sandbox does ha have a storm. So right here in Universe Sandbox, uh, we don't really have any more spots except for, of course, Jupiter. So if I actually look at Neptune, um, there's no spot. There's actually no dark spot here. Only Jupiter seems to have a spot, or at least that's what I found so far. Um, if I go to Jupiter, however, what's really interesting is that the way this, uh, where is it? The way the great red spot is actually interpreted is very, very interesting. So I could actually change the composition of Jupiter to make it a terrestrial planet. And so it becomes very, very different in terms of appearance. If I suddenly return it back into its um, gas giant state, 
you'll notice that the gas, uh, not the gas, but the great red spot is actually back. Even though Jupiter looks completely different, the spot is still here. So it's basically like a separate, uh, separate object, a separate thing that uh, renders on the surface of this gas giant. So I was wondering if I can maybe recreate this somewhere else. Let's actually see if we can do it. I don't really know uh, if it's going to work. I've never really done this before, but this is going to be a little experiment. So let's see if we can actually create more different dark spots or um, giant anti-cyclones on different gas giants because they seem to be very, very, very um, common. And where the, here are the planets. Um, they seem to be very common in our solar system. So maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to create something by placing a bunch of them somewhere here and there, over here and over here and, and over there. So there's like 20 of them or so. Um, we can basically take a look at them using the chart mode. Okay, so some of them are burning. That's not a good sign. But for the most part, we can kind of see what's happening here. So I can accelerate time a little bit and start looking for these uh, spots. Now, just uh, browsing right now, I can kind of see that there's nothing. But it might be actually better if we look at them individually, starting with the ones on the outskirts because they're a little bit easier to see. So this right here is called Aurora, and as we can see, Aurora seems to have nothing. So just again, uh, once again, just a simple gas giant that um, is very beautiful, but doesn't have any um, any spots on it. So I'm going to go through all of these individually and see if we can find something. Because I was always um, curious about how this game actually renders planets. Now it seems in terms of gas giants, it does give them random um, colors, but it does give them these very similar bands of, um, I guess you could call it cloud layers, which are obviously present on all of the gas giants in, in our solar system. And so it seems to do the same here. It, it renders them. It renders the clouds, but it doesn't really render the storms, which do appear everywhere. Um, so yeah, none of these have storms so far, but I'm going to go through all of them nevertheless. And uh, having gone through all of them, I can kind of confirm that none of them had, unfortunately, any storms. This is actually one of the more beautiful renderings so far. I've never seen a gas giant in, in this sort of color, but this is really, really pretty. Um, so unfortunately, yes, the storms are only present, or I guess the one storm is only present on um, on Jupiter. Even Saturn doesn't have a storm, Neptune doesn't have one, and very likely Uranus doesn't either, because we haven't really seen one on Uranus yet. But it's a really, really interesting phenomenon to study, and I, I hope that um, astronomers do study it in more detail and, and figure out what exactly is happening there, because the great red spot on Jupiter has been here for hundreds of years. It did change size, it, it did actually change shape a little bit, uh, but it's basically an object or I guess um, an actual phenomenon that um, is very persistent and may reappear again. Um, and the fact that Neptune has them too, but they work slightly different, uh, might actually give us a clue on what is actually happening inside of these beautiful gas giants, because they're still a mystery to us, and hopefully the Juno mission to Jupiter will be able to figure this out. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. Hopefully you learned something from it, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about the spots on these gas giants. Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and possibly share this video with someone who you think may like watching these videos as well. Like this video if you actually liked it, and consider supporting uh, this channel on Patreon, because this will kind of sort of give me an opportunity to buy a better camera and possibly also a better microphone, so my voice is not as cranky and as shallow and as unexciting anymore, if you know what I mean. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate all your support so far. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye. And I'm going to give you a manual spot by colliding you with an object. Ha, ah, take that. Now you have a spot as well. It's going to be called the Great Pluto Spot of Runustas. That's your name, right? Runustas. There we go. Look at this. It's beautiful. That's how it's done. Science. Science, everyone.